Hey guys, welcome back. So when it comes to crafting projects or making stuff in general, I think it's not only important to strive to improve the results of your projects, but also the workflow itself. Think about it, the more work you can do, the more results you'll see and the faster you learn. So it's kind of like a positive feedback loop. So it's very important to think about how you're using your tools or what tools you're not even using and how you can improve your workflow to really streamline it, you know? So today I wanna to show you a tool that I use very often and it will really change the way that uh, you approach your electronics projects in an incredible way. Trust me, it's really awesome. It's called Fritzing and it's really, really great. Okay, so first and foremost, Fritzing is a project that focuses on making electronics more accessible to regular people. And that's great news for us regular people. <laughs> Fritzing software is primarily used to visualize electronics projects with components that are true to scale. Basically, you get an infinite sorting box of components that you can get in real life, and you can just play around with them like Legos. I hope your eyes are lighting up with possibilities already. So before I start an electronics project, especially a very complicated one, I open up a blank Fritzing project and try to lay it all out. My brain just doesn't have enough RAM to uh, keep track of every wire and every connection at all times, so I prefer committing a design to a canvas. By laying out a circuit virtually like that first, not only you can spot mistakes in assumptions and plans that you have made, but also think of improvements without wasting any real life components. Pretty neat, huh? Fritzing is really flexible too, so if there's any component that you might not find in the standard inventory, there's pretty sure someone else out there that already made a file for you to download and you can just load up any component you would like. For example, for the video that I made about powering massive arrays of LEDs, I had to download the new Pixel library from Adafruit. All I did was Google it and there it was. So with a large enough inventory and clever labeling and clever substitutions, you can basically recreate any project out there in Fritzing. So it's really powerful like that. The limiting factor is usually how you use it, you know? So this part might not matter that much to people who work on projects that are not space constricted, but for cosplayers, it's very important. For the most part, all things in Fritzing are true to scale. So for example, if you have an Arduino and a battery that fits next to each other on your screen, they'll have the same proportionality in real life. It's an important feature worth remembering because uh, I have caught myself many times overestimating the size of uh, some LED rings. And sure, I would have made a project that would have been functional, but in the end, it would have not fit my prop. So Fritzing saved me there. Documentation is by far the most useful aspect of Fritzing in my opinion and in my use case. When you're in the middle of a project, sure, you can name all the wires and uh, tell which wire goes where and does what, but uh, what happens when you're done with it? You finish your project, weeks and months go by, and then you pick it up again and it's behaving weird, LEDs are flickering, where do you begin to troubleshoot? Before I started documenting all of the designs in Fritzing, I used to go through piles of notes and scribbles and hand-drawn schematics just to reverse engineer my own designs. It was such a pain. By documenting everything you build in Fritzing, you'll make your project so much easier to maintain. Also, you might be able to decipher all your notes and drawings, but if you need to find help online, that will hardly work. I sometimes get sent hand-drawn schematics and it's kind of hard to figure out, so trust me, a fritzing screenshot would go a long way. One real-world example that I can give you guys is my Doomfist gauntlet that broke down a day before the convention. Great timing, I know. I did the usual pre-convention test and the pressure sensor was just not working right. The controller of everything is in the shoulder, so there's wires running down all the way down the arm up to the fingertips, so it's anyone's guess where the problem was. But I noticed that there were some wires that were damaged in the elbow joint. So I loaded up Doomfist's file in Fritzing. Then I went and traced pressure sensors wires uh, all the way up to the elbow and cross-referenced them with the uh, color coding that I used in Fritzing. So the pressure sensor wire in the joint was actually fine and it was some other wires that were damaged. So I ruled that part out and I just had to look further upstream for potential weak points and sure enough I found it. It was just like a loose connection in one of the connectors. Very easy fix and I solved it like 10 minutes. So it saved me a lot of stress and reverse engineering time. Anyways, this was just a little taste for what you could and should use fritzing for. It has really helped me throughout the years and I really hope it helps you too. The easier you make it for yourself to build new things or repair old ones, the more stuff gets done overall and everyone benefits from that, you know? So yeah, hope you learned something, uh, leave a thumbs up or subscribe if you found this useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.